so Project Evex is the next installment in in the uh, in our you know the Project Eva series. Um, we've had three titles in North America so far, um, and uh, you know this is a new game with a completely new uh, set list uh, compared to the previous games. Um, but the biggest kind of difference between this game and the previous games is that this game has much more. There's a lot more meta meta game kind of going on, and there's sort of story. There's like a story aspect to it as well. There's, it's more of a not. It's not just play a song, go to the next song, play that song, go to the next song, unlock another difficulty, play the next song. There's there's actually story progression. Uh, there's more like you know missions that you have to fulfill to kind of progress things and make things and move things forward. Um, but the core gameplay um, remains sort of. Essentially un untouched, um, we've added another one, one single more mechanic called the rush mechanic, uh, which is basically when uh, you'll see these rush icons uh, appear and when it hits, you just have to kind of rapidly mash the button really quickly to, to kind of build meter. But uh, it's still the, the Project Diva that everyone has come to know and love. So you said something about like, missions? Or... Yes, I'll, 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 just, I'll get into that a little bit when I show you the gameplay, but yeah, so the, there's more mission modes, so there's things that you'll have to achieve uh, to progress the story and unlock new elements and unlock new, uh, certain aspects of the game. Um, some, of the, some of those missions, which are, which are called requests, some of the requests are, call, are simple, just like clear this song, but some of them are a little bit more textured and require you to do uh, perform certain songs under certain conditions with certain modifiers. Um, so it definitely uh, adds a little bit more, more sort of metagame to the, to the aspect of the game. I'm going to switch to a different song here. Let's see, what was the other one that we can share? Not Holy Lance? No, we're not doing Holy Lance. <laughs> you can't be missing out on that, man. <laughs> so, um, like, where was it going? So, the, so, like, I mentioned that there was a, uh, I mentioned that there's a story mode. Um, so, it's not really a story mode, but the, the game progression is driven through this sort of narrative as Miku and her friends sort of um, try to res essentially restore light to the world. Um, in this game, the world is broken up into five clouds. And each cloud is represented by an, a, a specific aura uh, that they have to kind of explore as they, as they move through the clouds. So the, the five auras are classic, cool, cute, uh, elegant, and quirky. And so as they explore each cloud and you know, perform songs within those clouds, they learn what it means to be quirky, or they learn what it means to be cool, and you kind of, kind of go through, because in each, all the songs in those particular clouds are like cool rock songs, or like cute idol pop songs, and so by performing those songs, they kind of learn how to you know, express those, those particular R's um, through, through the aspect of, of uh, exploring them. And, 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 and a lot of the stuff in the game has been, a lot of the cosmetic stuff that was in the game previously, like their costumes and the accessories, previous games they were always just simply cosmetic. But in this game there's much more like metagame going on where each costume has, uh, has an R associated with it. So if you basically, if you're playing a, a, a cute song and you wear a cute, a cute R outfit, you'll basically uh, kind of apply like a multiplier to how, much, how many points you, you derive from, from, from playing the song. Um, and so because of that metagame, um, you know, people have to kind of think more strategically about what sort of parts are kind of changing about the characters and how they're performing. Um, because if you, you can either play it um, just whatever you want to do, however you want to do, but it kind of slows down your progression. It's important to kind of consider how you're, you're putting everything, putting each performance together. Because if you build optimal performances, it basically g generates more voltage, as the sort of in-game currency is called. And by generating more voltage, you push the game forward quicker. So another interesting aspect, which I'm going to record here right next, is that we've also included uh, a new type of song, which are uh, medleys, which are basically like a couple songs in one. They, 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 instead of having these one-off songs, we have um, a number of, uh, of songs kind of combined into one here. So this is the cool medley. Medleys in the game are, are essentially boss songs. So you, when you go into a cloud for the first time, you, you, can, you'll, you have to play the four bass songs. And once you've cleared the four bass songs, you'll unlock sort of the boss medley. And once you clear that medley, you clear the cloud, and you can move on to the next cloud. That's it. Oops, that's not the right button. That's the Japanese button right there. Switch between the English and Japanese version. Oh, circle. Yeah, they always, they always trip you up, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> they always throw you off. So there's a there's a rush with the new ones with the rush icon there. 
people on drums singing at the same time. So there's a medley for every boss in the game, is that what that is? Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a medley for every cloud in the game, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, classic medley, cute medley, cool medley, elegant medley, and a quirky medley. So some of the songs in the medleys have, have made appearances in other other Miku games to date, but they're usually these are like kind of remixed and since they're combined with other music it's like a completely different sort of experience altogether. How many difficulties are in the game? So there are four difficulties. Easy, normal, hard, and extreme. So another new thing, that, so in, in Project Eve Second, we, they had, ch during the chance times, if you cleared the chance time, it would basically d cause you to, a special sort of a, uh, event to happen. But in this game, they've changed the mechanic into where you basically, the characters go through these transformations. Um, but, but I haven't enabled a transformation for this, but when they go through the chance, and that's how, that's how uh, you obtain modules. In the previous games, when you would, uh, you basically play the games, and uh, play the songs and you get currency and you take the currency and you use it to buy outfits in the store. Um, but in this game, instead of a currency based system, it's more of a, um, it's more of a, uh, it's a, they change it to a drop system. So what happens is when you clear, when you clear the chance times and you hit that big star, the characters will go through a transformation which I'll sh show you up here in a second. Um, and what they transform into is sort of Essentially random, but you can, depending on which which outfits you choose and which kind of items that you equip your character with, you can influence where you're more likely to get like a rare drop or a common drop. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some there's some gamification there as well. I mean, it just gives more replay value because when you play the songs, you don't know what you're gonna, you never know what you're gonna get. So it becomes this sort of like gotcha bonus kind of mechanic. So I'm gonna drop I'm gonna drop this into the more. So that what we were just seeing was basically a full unlocked version, so I could access the the in, sort of in-game stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to drop you into a, basically, uh, this is basically like 30 minutes into the game, 30, 40 minutes into the game. So I've, we've played through the, um, the classic cloud, the very first cloud you have access to. And once you clear that first cloud, you have an option to, to choose which cloud you want to explore next. So you can choose from any four. So it's non-linear. You can go to any cloud. Um, and so we're going to kind of check out what it's like to kind of play through essentially a single arc. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've integrated sort of the, the room stuff in here. You can actually kind of you can kind of tap Miku right here. You tap her with your card. She kind of reacts, right? right. And you, it's really it's actually really interesting. So you'll notice this is a, this is actually Miku in, a, in her classic format. You see her kind of standing here. You can actually go and change her. Um, if you change her into a different outfit, uh, like let's say I'm going to put her in a let's put her in Sea Lily, which is a cute. You can see which which R is associated with by the little icon there. The star little cute star is cute. So I'm going to put her in cute. And, their, and her personality will change, um, and some of her dialogue actually changes slightly depending on uh, what her what her active R is. So that kind of gives players can kind of kind of feel like what is cute Mika like, or what is quirky Mika like. So like here, if I tap her in, she so has like a different sort of a different reaction or whatever, right? So, so we're gonna go go into cloud. This, this cloud request uh, is the is the new thing. So here we are. We're, we can choose any cloud we want to go to. We can clue, clue, uh, cute cloud, cool cloud, elegant cloud. Or the quirky cloud. So we're going to jump in here. Try quirky. Like those are all the songs they were associated with. The five exactly. Five. These are all the songs. So first of all, you can and you can of course you can start with any song you want. So we can go and jump in here and pick any song we want to play. Um, what's a good 
quirky song. Let's start with this one. Look like and just let it play. So, so go back to the, the gamification. So, one of the one of the big things that kind of happens as you press through the game is the is ability to, to generate voltage when you're playing. So, right now I have, uh, since I'm I'm in the quirky cloud, but I have a cute outfit on, right? A yeah. cute module on. But if I go in here and I pick, um, instead pick a scroll down here to find a find a quirky module. Let's pick this one. You'll notice that my my I have a, a voltage rate bonus that popped up there, um, which means I basically generate more. More voltage through, for, for, through playthroughs. And you can actually add accessories and different things and different combinations which add to that bonus and cause you to sort of generate voltage quicker and quicker, which is very important. Not so much important for the front end of the game, but it becomes very important later. And, for, in the, and later in the game, you need to be generating voltage to push the story forward. But in the first part of the game, when you're just initially exploring the clouds, it's, it's just you're simply trying to get through the songs. But voltage also um, determines how much voltage you, you get, determines how many. Items drop at the end of the at the end of the stage, which you'll see yeah. in a second. So we're gonna let this play through. You mean like pushing the story forward in terms of right? So, yeah, yeah. So so like as you as you get past a certain a certain point in the game, um, you'll have to kind of start playing mu songs to charge the 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 cloud prisms up, and the speed at which they they're charged by generating voltage. If you if you only generate a little bit of voltage, they don't charge very quickly. But if you charge lots of voltage, they charge very quickly. And that just, the more you, the, at the more voltage and the more times you can charge the crystals, you know, it, there's certain content that's like, oh, you, you've done this or you've, oh, you've collected this much voltage to date and more content, more things unlock as you, as you progress. All right. So you'll see right here, say already I have a 20% a bonus on this, this is 120% down here. Yeah. So that's a multiplier that's being applied to every time I, every time you hit, hit a points here, right. it's, this it has this voltage counter down here on the right side. So the more, more multiplier I have, the more points I'm essentially getting for that. Gotcha. And these little ones with the little glow on, you'll notice some, some notes have, have like a little glow around it. If I can find it. Just wait for a second. Just wait. Not yet. You'll see. When, you'll know. You'll see it when you see it. Not yet. That that one right there. Oh. Okay. If you hit that, you get like an instant five percent boost on it. Oh, so okay. so that kind of thing. They've kind of added more mechanics, more things to kind of look out for. I think they're set in the same place every single time. Okay. But this depends on the on the difficulty as well. Right, of course. So, uh, so by clearing these, what, what happens is um, you'll you'll trigger these. Like I said, they, you know, there's there's more of a story progression in this one compared to the previous games. So, like once you finish a, a song, you're gonna get like a little cutscene where the characters start talking about, you know. What it means to be quirky. So, because we're in the quirky cloud, we're gonna have Miku and her friends uh, learning about what it means to be quirky. Mm. This is just for your, just to kind of get an idea how what the what the cutscenes look like in the game. So is this the first time they've had more of a story? Yeah, they've never had any dialogue. Characters right. have never had any dialogue or anything. So this is this is actually really really you know a challenging aspect. I think so like you as you mentioned, these are all licensed characters. Um, and the, the interesting thing about about you know Vocaloid in general is that people they're sort of blank slates. And so people kind of project themselves onto the characters. So, to, so it's actually kind of it's kind of a challenge to come in here and try to give them per interesting personalities without, right, if, if, you know, without <laughs> offending anyone. Yeah, you know, like like you know, it's 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 a been a real challenge. Um, but it's actually very interesting as well. I mean, there's there's a lot of um, thought that's been gone into it, and, and because because at the same time, you know, we had all these, um, you know, each character when they're in their classic style, they're kind of 
straight lace, but if they're in the quirky style or the cool style, they, they have to sound quirky, they have to sound cool. Um, so you kind of have to push the character a little bit to get it there. Um, so it's, it's been a very interesting challenge. So, so this is a, a new mechanic introduction there introducing gifts here. So again you can give gifts and which affects the friendship and friendship affects how fast you charge voltage again. Right. Um, so again it's all it's all it's all all the aspects of the game used to be very like kind of well there's this bit here and there's this bit here, there's this bit here, but now in, in Project Eve X they've taken a whole bunch of mechanics and sort of finally melded them together. So there's this nice kind of clean uh, you know progression through the title. All feed into one another. It all feeds into one each other, yeah. So that's basically it. That's the kind of the new where it's going. There's tons of stuff that I could talk for an hour, an hour and a half about, but I don't think John's going to let me talk that long.